Welcome to another wonderful Wednesday where this is a magnificent... Well, I, I had no more W words. I say I got to come up with a new phrase. Welcome back to the family room. This is where we dive in and make even more people mad. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm fired up. I was listening to. I sent it to to dad before he came in. I was listening to uh, not the dad. Um, Kelsey's joining us in the room, but uh, hey. <laughs> they can't hear you. Uh, no, I was listening to some some Bible motivation. Hop on YouTube and search Bible motivation. You need it. I follow. Um, I think it's Grace, Grit, and Love is this one that I am uh, subscri- subscribed to. But uh, yeah, I make fun of myself. I don't care. I don't need the world to do it. Um, but yeah, they had a, that one from John Hagee, and I was watching one with Billy Graham earlier. Man, I'm I'm fired up. And Did you, you preached even need me on the cross. Yeah, because it was your sermon, <laughs> so I can't just run off because you preached it. I hey, got my Carl. school hoodie on. Carl's watching from Elkton. Carl's you, watching brother. from Elkton. Let us know where you're watching from. Yeah, whichever sound room off. You're in. I forgot. I, see, I'm so fired up. I forgot the routine. Let's go to work. Uh, I'm the guy. I'll make a couple of quick announcements. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, small groups are going really well locally. If you're in the St. Augustine area, every fam Tuesday groups. night, don't miss it. What did you fam, think of last night? Fam groups. Fam groups. Uh, last night, I don't know if Rick's going to hear this. Awesome job. I was. Right. I, I, I told uh, Robbie in the kitchen afterwards, that's, <laughs> that's the most I've ever heard Rick speak. And he did a great job. And it was Absolutely. really good. Um, guys, if you're not coming to the men's fam group on Tuesday, Tuesday nights, night. At uh, 630. 630. We're is. picking up people. Uh, we are. And there was a couple guys my age. We yep. need to get more guys my age. Uh, the church is only as strong as the men that are in it. Yes, sir. And he's working on that. We're building that. That's biblical. The, the subject last night was uh, forsake the fake. And I didn't know where he was going with that, what he was going to be talking about. But as it turned out, let's be bold about it. It's just the family room. He was going to be talking about uh, internet pornography and how the dopamine effect is in people's lives, stealing the real joy away from real life. It was fantastic from start to finish. So, guys, really don't good. forget, don't miss. Really Next good. week is Joe Costello. Yes. Joe's going to be up to bat. So I can't we always remember. Like, what was the one that he's doing? Because Rick He said didn't it. say. I thought he did. Oh, I didn't hear it. He didn't say. I don't but, know. I, I wrote down a great time. I saw you writing a bunch of notes. I wrote a ton of I notes. I bet you we're going to be hearing that. And what I do is soon. I send it to the men in the uh, in the fam group, yeah. the small one. So they keep in, in touch with everybody. This coming Sunday is Easter Resurrection Sunday, the 31st. We're you having have two to services. Say resurrection. I love resurrection. You're going to get in trouble if you we're avoid saying it. I use the word resurrection, even though some with the initials FS <laughs> don't. Uh, every Sunday, well, <laughs> every Sunday, nine and eleven, and we have children's programs all laid out. Uh, we were just talking about it. We're not the church that does all the crash, boom, bang stuff, but no. we are going to have. A and not that we're Sunday. against that, because I not do want to make all. that distinction. I was, I was not telling you earlier when I was getting my hair cut. Um, PJ was asking me, you know, what, what are you guys doing? And I was like, you know, it's it's we we celebrate it as mm-hmm. you know the special day. It's the big day. But we're not the the church that does all the big extra um, mm-hmm. plays and performances. Easter eggs and there's from helicopters. Nothing, yeah, well, yeah, and the Easter egg hunts. It's not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just I don't like the – it's almost like false advertising for a church mm-hmm. because you come in – if you're a, a a Christer Christian, where you come in on Christmas and Easter, mm-hmm. um, or you know, if you're not a Christian but you you still go on those days, you know, it's kind of like the thing to do in the South, you know, the, the mm-hmm. tradition almost. And you come to these churches, and not that there's anything wrong with it, but you get a whole wrong impression of what the right. church is. And I, you know, you get their heart behind it. They're trying to make it special for the mm-hmm. people trying that only come those, and, all that. and you're trying to reach people. But if your Easter looks nothing like the rest of the year in your church, they don't. I mean, why, why, why right. should you go back? Right. If you don't know what to expect when you go back, and it looks completely different the Sunday before and the Sunday after, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know. I don't want to say you're doing it wrong, but you know, you don't want to give people a false idea of right. what your church is. So, and we stay in our lane. We do our thing. We, we uh, do our thing, and let you do your thing, and it, yeah, it, it, it works. God will and use we, that everybody's got their own. That's why yep. we've got on our homepage of the website the different churches to go to. If you don't like this one, great. Just go somewhere that's biblically accurate. Amen. 
And so after that, on the following Sunday, we're going to have baptism, and that day is also Food Truck Sunday. I'm ready for If you that. haven't heard Those of Food Truck good. Sunday, Food Truck Sunday is when we partner with local uh, food trucks here in our local area to come. They set up, and right when we say amen after service and go out in the parking lot, they're sitting out there, usually two of them. Uh, it's our way of supporting local businesses with a hands-on approach, which is what we always do. Uh, baptism is going to be right outside, so if you're interested in being baptized on that day, let us know. You can say it in the comments or send us a message. We'll get that done. It's uh, and the trucks will be outside. Baptismal tank's going to be outside. It's oh, we're putting a heater in it, so you won't be cold. So it's going to be, be a, it's, it's going to be, be a great what? great day. Oh, and the movie night. Yeah. Oh, where's that at? I don't. April fifth. It's not on the website, Kelsey. Ooh. April fifth. Um, we are having another movie night. We're previewing The Chosen. We are previewing The Chosen Season 4, Episodes 1 and 2. And correct me if I'm wrong. She will. Um, the next week, the following week, is the next two episodes? Yes. No, April 19th. April 19th. That's See, what I I'm glad she's in the room. You should do this more often. No. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so April 5th, The Chosen Season 4, mm-hmm. Episodes 1 and 2. Um, you know, I, I'll give a shout-out to Kelsey. I'm kind of proud that she hasn't uh, snuck that to watch at home since only churches can access it. Good job. Um, I know I'm very excited to see it. So if it. you'd like it's to get a, a sneak show. preview of it before it even gets released to the yeah, public? Yeah, because it's not out. Come uh, on. Unless you saw it in theaters, um, only churches can access we'll those set it episode, up. episodes. And then April 14th is the next uh, baby dedication yep, Sunday. And Dedicating infants, babies, I don't even know children. the last one. It's been a was. while. When, when COVID not came since along, I've been back. a lot of things that we did uh, monthly instantly kind of kind of went to the side burner. So we're bringing all that stuff back. Um, very exciting times right now. Uh, while you're there, while you're watching, let us know again where you're watching from, what you're doing, what's for dinner, because <laughs> I'm hungry. And <laughs> the uh, word if of you the are word. A, if you are an instrumentalist or a keyboard player, if you're a keyboard player, a bassist, yes. get in touch with Jared. He's our email us, director. Info at familychurch.social. We want to talk to you. We say I don't go to church there. Get in touch with us. We want to talk to you. We are expanding everything that we're doing, and we'd love to talk to you. Exactly. I'm ready. To get to work. I'm going to do like you do and just sit over here and smile while you just ramble on. This is going to be a short night. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about the, uh, the, apparently the first thing I wrote down on my phone, because I didn't have my notebook, was the, the, the hymn, I guess, the nothing to my hand I bring. Okay. Simply to the, cl- the cross I cling. We're cling. breaking down the sermon from last Sunday, which I preached uh, on Palm Sunday. And instead of going with your traditional normal Palm Sunday sermon, I felt impressed to go way back to the basics and talk about the cross. Um, I'm an old school, hard, Pentecostal boy, and that's my kind of preaching. I'm old school. This is a beautiful thing with us. Uh, I'm I'm old school. You're decidedly in the, the new group of things with all that, so it's a good balance. But I love that old school preaching of the cross, man. I grew up to it. And I said, like, at, at certain points, that um, there was a time when the, the singing of the cross dominated our music and the preaching of the cross dominated our preaching. And now it seems like sometimes the cross is almost fighting for a way to find its way back into our festivities. We're doing all that we're doing. We can't forget Jesus. We can't forget the cross. It's not about our churches and our stuff and our religions and all that kind of stuff. How big, how bold, how brash. It's about the cross and what Jesus did for us, the gospel. You know, God gave his son. His son died on the cross. So that was where I went with that. And your, your first thing you wrote was nothing in my hand I bring. I listened to a sermon by Alistair Begg. If you know who Alistair Begg is, put it in there. There was a lot of people that uh, yeah, they knew. said they knew. <laughs> I, was, I was surprised, not surprised, but he's relatively new to me. I've heard his voice and heard some of his sermons, but... He was preaching on salvation, and he mentioned Acts chapter 16, and he asked that age-old question, if you were to die today, good question for the family room, if you were to die today and Jesus were to meet you at the gate and ask you, why should I let you into my heaven, what would you say? And we all have our answers, and, and he said something that I'd never heard, and I gave it, and I'm giving it again. Um, he said, usually any answer that begins with the word I is going to be wrong. That was such a... A wreck, too, because as soon as you you say that, the first thing in your head, or at least my head, was like, well, I have accepted Jesus I as have my accepted Savior. Jesus. 
And mm-hmm. then you're like, well, if you begin with I, and I'm like, oh, well. Well, somebody in the church shouted out an answer. The, oh, really? Yes, they I did. Hear they shouted out an answer, and then after the church, bowl. they came to me and apologized. I said, no, 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 no. There's no wrong answer to that. As long as you know, you know, you you are born again. That's there's. It's not really wrong, but he was just making a point. And the point was that if uh, you start with the letter or the word I, you shift the focus from Jesus onto yourself. Onto yourself. And the last thing that is supposed to happen is to shift the focus of salvation from. You did Jesus good tying it in because when you said it, and then immediately, like I said, what popped in my head was that. And then when you started going in on it, like, you know, oh, I have done this, I have done that, yeah. and I've done, and it was like, okay, yeah. well, that, yeah, that like makes you say, sense. I'm a good person. I've and, been I mean, that's baptized. just like the Pharisees and all the people, right. like I talked about with the older tithe, brother. I pay tithe of all I possess. I, yeah. No, that's not about what that was. And then he answered it with a theological song, Rock of Ages, 1762. When he said, verse 3, nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling. And old school church folks, gray hairs. I think I wrote it down because the way you sang sang it, Mm -hmm. uh, and I said it to Brandon and and Dylan, you sang it, uh, it sounded like you were trying to sing like Bing Crosby. The the way that you inflected on the words. I don't know, it was the way you sang it, and I was like... What? <laughs> you know, the dude from Texas, if you're watching, go ahead and jump on him now. Hey, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. Uh, it was the verse three of that song, and uh, Rock of Ages, and nothing in my hand I bring simply to the cross I cling. I grew up singing that, and it was a true statement. If you come to him and say, you know, all I know is the Jesus died on the cross, gave you know, his life bring for me. Back is <laughs> you know, one thing that I like that we're doing is, and it's, it's probably a flashpoint for a lot of people, I love that in, in almost all of our services now, we are doing the uh, sinner's prayer. Mm. I love that. There's I, a lot of people that don't, but I do. I mean... And, I, and again, why do you think they don't? They think... <laughs> well, uh, because religion is... Ooh, I almost said a bad R word. The hard R. Uh, religion is dumb. Um oh. Yeah. Rotten. It is <laughs> almost, rotten. Almost got us kicked off the internet. Don't do that. No. Um, religion is, is ridiculous. That's the word I was thinking of. That's mm-hmm. what I was going to use. Uh, religion is <laughs> ridiculous. Um, and you read the comments on it for the people that do that, the sinner's prayer. Mm-hmm. They say that it's not biblical. They say mm-hmm. that you know, people that. think it's... Uh, and you said it before. They Not that you said it, but you've given the... Um, the counter argument to it that people think it's like a, a magical prayer that you can say and you mm-hmm. get into heaven. But, and I love that you put it the way you said it the one day, and that's how I try, I'm trying to tie it into when I preach, is it's not a magical prayer. It's not just like a, a get out of jail free card for a monopoly, but it is a way for you to believe and apply the Bible to your life, to uh, believe it in your heart. Right. And confess it with your mouth, mm-hmm. and by doing that, that's mm-hmm. that is. I would say that's biblical. I would say that's true. Obviously, if you're standing in church and you're just like repeating the sinner's prayer, right. but you're not truly accepting Jesus into your life, and you're not acknowledging that you're a sinner in need of a savior, then yeah, it, it doesn't mm-hmm. mean anything. But when you're like- moved and you actually genuinely believe it and feel it. What That's I like is that it's it. like preparing the way. It's like a John Baptist thing. You can use this for the future. It's like preparing the way that, okay, they're sitting here on that morning, and if they're not going to say it, they're not going to say it. But if they do and they don't mean it, then it doesn't mean anything. But if you give them that pattern, then at some point when they are at some place, maybe rock bottom, maybe in trouble, maybe in a broken place, yes. They remember, you know what, in my church, this is how we prayed. We exactly. said, God, yeah. come into my heart, forgive my sins, save my soul. And then they get it, and then, then the work is done. I think anything that we can do to put tools into people's hands. And that's why I, I, that's why I don't understand the religious people, the people that, uh, that is the whole point, mm-hmm. is to reach the lost. Jesus himself said right. he didn't come for the, the healthy, he came to save the sick. He came for the lost, which in reality is all of us. You either are the younger prodigal son. You should put that on a reel. Well, it's probably going to end up on one. We're all lost. I mean, that is biblical. We're all like sheep have gone astray. It's, it's the younger brother in the prodigal story and the older prodigal. 
or the older, uh, the elder brother, sorry. Um, you know, the ones that tried to go our own way mm-hmm. and reject God, reject the Father, and then you have the elder brother who stayed, but his heart was just as far from the Father because all he was focused on was working his way to the reward. Mm-hmm. And in reality, the Father just wanted both of them to be in relationship with him. They already had the reward. They were already accepted. He just wanted them to be with mm-hmm. him in the relationship. But... That's the, Jesus came to save the lost, and there is there's only those two options. You either you know you're the sinner and you're running away from God, and you're doing everything you can to reject Him, or you're the hard hearted Pharisaical, uh, hyper religious person that thinks you know oh I go to church and I wear my suit and tie and I you know I tithe and we do communion and I do all this that's why I should get into heaven and it's like dude your heart is just as hard right. as the pharisees were and that's what I love the the statement that somebody made before and I'm I think I'm going to say it Sunday too is if Jesus showed up now we would kill him right again and and actually I did I wrote it down on my notes not only would we kill him again we'd do it faster because I said, well, think about it. I okay. said it to you the other day. He took three years to to make everybody mad at him. Mm-hmm. Well, not everybody, but to make the the right or the wrong people, depending on how you want to look at it, mad at him. And nowadays, you can spend three seconds on the internet because that's all we do now is we watch little reels of people and we think we know every single thing about them and everything that goes on within their church and everything that goes on within their life. And we don't know a single fraction or iota of anything that's going on in them or their heart or their head. But somehow we just read the headline news and go, oh, yep, they're right. And and that's the thing, too. Oh, I'm getting on a rant you now. You need me for this conversation. The thing like y'all sent with... Uh, with with elevation and how this year they're not using uh, church lingo. Mm-hmm. They're not using the term resurrection in their invites. And okay, on the one hand, you can see it because like, okay, yeah, we, we are acknowledging it. Do you think they're not going to acknowledge it and preach about the blood of Jesus in their church service? <clears throat> of course they are. It's ridiculous. But the point of them referring it to Easter, and I see it because you think about my generation, Mm -hmm. the people that aren't saved or haven't stepped foot in church before, if you use a a lingo that, if I'm like, hey, you've never been in church before, come to our church, we speak in tongues, and we're baptized by the fire of the Holy Ghost, and we do this, and we do that, and everybody's slain in the spirit, you're like, whoa, that sounds like a Jim Jones cult, I'm not going there, Mm -hmm. you have to reach these people where they are at, and then let God transform them afterwards, Mm -hmm. and what I've got this big gripe, and I've said it before on the family room, constantly, I can't stand, it's like a trend now to just attack church people and attack pastors, not even like necessarily ones that I like or follow, but it's just like, if you have any sort of big platform, and I'm sure we're on our way, uh, it, it's it's like the trend now. And and it's like, it, it's like Facebook. You think about it where you can send something, you can, you can post something by the Babylon Bee, and we know it's satire, satire, but people won't look at where it's from. They're not going to click slide on it to read baptism. it. Exactly. The elevation slide, the mm-hmm. thing that they it's made satire. up it's not saying real. that there was a slide going into their baptismal, baptismal pool to speed up the thing. Complete satire. Everybody just reads the headline now. Mm-hmm. Not Actually, what I, that was the point I was trying to make before I went down my rabbit hole. You need me for this conversation? We, we don't even read the headlines we, you get like five people to read the headlines, and then they start regurgitating that information, and then they, all those people, it's like a pyramid scheme, and then those people start regurgitating the information, and right. pretty soon, nobody even knows why they don't like such and such preacher. They're but just they saying just what everyone else has said about it, but nobody has taken the time to get into their church, get on their YouTube, why? <laughs> And play any sort of sermon from these people. They're just like, oh, this person said they preach prosperity gospel and they don't read the Bible in their church and they twist scripture. Have you taken any amount of time to go and do any of your own research? Or do you just go, oh, my buddy Jim from Alabama said that, you know, they got $500 shoes, so I'm not going to listen to anything they say. We don't look at anyone's character anymore. We don't look at the content of their messages or what their church is doing. We don't look at their outreach programs. 
if you've got more than a thousand people giving and tithing to your church and you're reaching people in your city, you're going to have a whole lot of people mad at you because somehow that means that you're evil and you've, you've, you're, a, you're a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. I mean, and I've talked about it with you. You could talk at any point you want, but the, the day of I Pentecost. Don't think I can. The day <laughs> the day of Pentecost. How many got saved? Three thousand? Right? Na, na, yes. Yeah. Three thousand. Wait a minute. I get to answer. Three thousand. Three thousand. Okay. No. But that's <laughs> that's the thing. It's what boggles my and you said it Sunday. How big is your church? Not big, Not enough. big enough. The world is still filled with people right now while we're talking, dying Amen. and going to hell. And that is my heart, reaching those people. If that's no one else is going to do it, I'm going to go after it. That's the point. Because that's what Jesus came to do. I, that was a great point, too. Um, people talking about mega churches and how bad they are and all that kind of stuff. And when somebody uh, here in St. Augustine, hey, let me say hey to Reggie, my friend in the Bronx. <laughs> Sorry, Reggie. Reggie Stutzman in the Bronx. <laughs> you're doing great work up there at the Prodigal Center. Shout out to the Prodigal Center. You're doing great work, man. Keep it up. He does a lot of the same stuff there that we do here with our food pantry. Oh, that's uh, awesome. You're doing great work, man. Keep it up. Let me encourage you. And remind me when you're going to be at Ocean Isle because um, you come in somewhere around us. We're going to be there in June. Let me know in the comments, if you will, while you're there. Um, but I said um, about the sermon, how big is your church? Not big enough. Never. You should always want to be. All these people that say we like these small churches, I get it. I get it. Uh, it starts small. It's supposed to start small. But if you're reaching people, it's not supposed to stay small. It's supposed to grow and, and expand, and the kingdom is about expansion. So to me, that's hide, That's literally like Jesus talking about the city on a hill mm -hmm. not being hidden, and you don't light your light and put it under a basket Amen. so nobody can see it. You're like, cool, small beginnings, awesome. So did the movement right. that we are all here still talking about, but it didn't stay that way. It's yep. not supposed to stay that way. That's the whole point of it. God is trying to reconcile the world back to himself. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along... Ah, I'm going to preach my whole thing. Oh, shush. The main business the is main the main business. business. We came to talk about the cross, and this is part of the cross. That's the whole reason why, why we are here. Oh, is that really why we're here? That's why we're here. Here, let you, me say yeah, something. No, you, I'm just going to sit over there and smile, <laughs> whatever you said earlier. All right, how about this? <laughs> I had a, launching a, an 80-year-old lady <laughs> contact me and say, I've never heard this before in my life, and I've been in church my whole life. I said he was crucified on a tree because it all started on a tree. Hey, now in the Garden I'm doing this Sunday, so don't be going all over there. His hands were pierced because with their hands they plucked the fruit from the tree in disobedience. His feet were pierced because our feet are swift to run to mischief. His side was pierced because it was from his side that Eve was taken. He wore a crown of thorns because the curse of Genesis 3 included thorns and thistles, so he was redeeming us. <laughs> well, club church. You guys, <laughs> y'all are not making this any easier. <laughs> we are working to stay Back on, on point here. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I, I, I'm re reiterating which, which, that. Who is that over there in that group? Facebook. It's always Facebook, Facebook on the right. Face group, Facebook, you guys Facebook. are troublemakers. The YouTube people, they're, they're nice. staying right on they're point. Nice. They're amen That's why mom's They got in little there. fire emojis because Kathy Cochran is in the uh, YouTube area. Y'all better <laughs> behave yourself. Kathy's watching. We need to monitor over in the Facebook because you guys are running wild. I am. <laughs> <Shh>. <laughs> On July the 14th. All right, man. I'll keep the house oh. holding up for you. Um, <laughs> no, you, you started going on in on that su uh, Sunday, and I was like, man. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because I was hoping, like, not a lot of people have seen that, so, you know, I could, I could say it. Not that I'm trying to find, you know, because somebody will clip it. Oh, he's trying to find revelation that hasn't been said before. There's nothing under the sun that yeah. hasn't been said before. Unless you're one of those, never mind. Um, but I did like, you made a point, somewhere between the cradle and the grave, mm -hmm. I must go to the cross and realize that it was for me. Right. There is a, uh, there is a cross standing there in my future. Uh, at some point, I must, between the cradle and the grave, I must go to the cross and have a reckoning. I, uh, I pulled that from... With no apologies from Tombstone, Doc Holliday. <laughs> it's a reckoning. I have to have a reckoning that this cross was all about me, and he took his, the sin of my sin on him on the cross. Uh, so, yeah. That amazes. I'm, I'm speaking, on obviously, on Sunday about there wasn't, there, there wasn't just the 
because uh, we always think of the the physical aspect of it, mm-hmm. all the the lashes, and you know the cat mm-hmm. or the what are the cat, cat of nine, nine tails, tails. Mm-hmm. and as brutal as that was, and I'm probably gonna watch. Uh, Kelsey's definitely not, but I'm gonna watch the Passion so uh, again. Uh, I watched that the other day. I'm already getting choked up thinking about it. Um, but I want to watch that again. But we always think of the physical aspect of it, but never the uh, the the psychological aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Because as bad as the pain was that he went through for the crucifixion uh, physically mm-hmm. with being beaten and being spit on and... Uh, you know, the nails going through his hands Locked and his feet of thorns, all and it. the crown of thorns and all that. Obviously, that was terrible. But then to uh, f- have to physically bear the weight, or I'm sorry, have to become sin mm-hmm. and bear the weight of all of our guilt and our shame and our sin, mm-hmm. and then to feel the separation mm-hmm. from the Father... That had to have been because you have to think, and I'm and I'm saying it Sunday. You have to think he spent eternity past before he came onto mm-hmm. the onto the world. He spent it in perfect harmony in heaven with God the Father. Never separated, never separated. And then he comes down, and sin sin cannot dwell where God is. God is God is supremely holy. That is the whole point uh, with not being able to touch the. Um, Oh my goodness! How much anything unclean? The not well, not that the the Ark of the Covenant uh-huh. and how he touched it and he died because sinful man. We we can't, and, and that's the thing with like the holy, the most holy holies, you know, not being able to go into the the tabernacle and the veil and being mm-hmm. separated. Sin can't dwell where God is. Right. So that was the for the first time, I guess you could say that he felt that separation, and then you know. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He never felt that, was that the before. My God, my God. So moment. you had you had the physical pain, and then you had the psychological pain of it, and it's just all of that. Mm-hmm. And even if you were the first, or not the the first, if even if you were the only person mm-hmm. on the planet, and he still would have done it for you. But the thing is, if you were the only person on the planet, you would have been the one that drove the nails. <sighs> you just You're waited welcome. for me to get to that, didn't you? Oh, did I beat you to it? No, I was saying I was. You were just like waiting for me to say it. If you were the only person on earth, he would die for you. Did you and know you would be the one to drive the nails? Did you know uh, in the Passion of the Christ, the hands that nail the or the ha- the hands that hammer the nails into his hands and feet in the Passion of the Christ is Mel Gibson's hands. I heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. And and they're, they're supposed to be doing a part two. Yes, of whenever I think that it's comes resurrection. Out. Man, it's, it's such a be good, good movie. It's, it's good. such a good movie. And the, and I Appreciate can't wait to see it on everybody's children. comments, you guys. What's your favorite thing about Resurrection Sunday? We're going to not get off topic, but what's your favorite Anymore. thing about <laughs> Resurrection Sunday? Um, we, have, we have a lot to talk about, a lot of stuff to think about when it comes to that. Um, my favorite thing is just a reminder, the cross. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Uh, he came from heaven to earth to die on Calvary's cross in my place. And every church needs to remember that the truest measure of our effectiveness should be, did anyone meet Jesus today? Did we lift him up so effectively that he will draw people to himself, not to our cool church? And if we do that, then we have fulfilled the calling. We have fulfilled the Great Commission. That was a point that I made Sunday, and I really felt that when I said it. It's not about all of our stuff and things and productions. And, and again, nothing wrong with that if you joined us somewhere after we said that. Nothing wrong with that. But did we lift him up so well that when people walk out of here today, they say, we've seen Jesus today. We, we saw the, the maker. We saw the master. We saw the savior. And he died on that cross for me. That is, that is the whole point to... Mm-hmm. Cast the wide net and let him sort out the fish. Mm-hmm. I think that's why there's a lot of people, you know, that hate on the the mega churches and the aspect and, you know, oh, they're just doing this and they're getting all these. And it's like, okay, but they're reaching a lot of people. And whether if you reach 10,000 and only 100 of them still come to Jesus from it, is that a failure? It's 100. That's still 100 people. Mm-hmm. That's still a hundred souls that got one <coughs> from hell, mm-hmm. and it shouldn't like 
on the one hand, that's the numbers it shouldn't be about per se. I'm trying to think how to say that. Like we need to get as many people as we can. We need to get, like you said, the church is never big enough. We need to have the gospel on every platform imaginable because if the gospel's not, only hell is. And we need to be reaching as many people as possible. And whether we get a million people to follow us and a hundred thousand or a hundred come to Jesus, awesome. That's great. That's the whole point. That's all worth it. We're trying to get as many as we can, Mm -hmm. no matter how it is. Like you said, Jeremiah preached his entire life and didn't have record of a single convert. Right. But he never stopped. That's it. And that is that is my we're never gonna stop. We're never gonna stop. A reminder that I'm still worth it for him. I was, I am, and will be worth it. Exactly. Good stuff. It was all about his love. How much he loves us. For us. Good stuff. One of the things I I said was um, the cross is not jewelry. Somebody walked up to me in the gym, and I don't even know that I know who it was. I mean, I recognize them kind of, so I know they either were watching or they have been in church, and they just casually walked by and went, the cross is not jewelry. And I was like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm what? It's not jewelry. It's not a wall <laughs> decoration. Uh, it's not an icon. It's not meant to become any of that. Uh, that cross is uh, not seeker friendly. And and boy, there's a buzz phrase that you can really get people mad about. I'm not against being seeker friendly. And it's so, so that's funny too. So much of this stuff that we say, like if you say uh, it, it's not seeker friendly, then somebody goes, "Oh, you're anti seeker friendly." No, I'm not. I'm not anti. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you say. I don't gonna care what we words. do to reach people. Short of sin, reaching people is is what we're supposed to be doing. Trying to not win them to us, and not to win them to our church, and not to try to get them to come here so we're bigger than the one down the street. No, but so that they don't spend eternity separated from God. And if that means that we do whatever we do to reach them, fine. If that means that we are, be seeker friendly, okay, then we can do that. But. It's the cross is not seeker friendly. It's very offensive. It's dis, it's disgusting. It's brutal. It's bloody, but it's the cross that draws men to Christ. It, it's it's an amazing thing. I think it's uh, the the loudest voices against you. Usually, the loudest voices that are attacking are the ones with the most idle hands. Come on, you're about just to you're about to dig in. Aren't let you? that. No, I'm just going to let that hats. one hang. I'm just yeah. No, there's always you're never going to have any shortage uh, of anybody against you, mm-hmm. and usually it's by somebody that's in their mom's basement that has no sort of following whatsoever, and they're barely doing anything. Mm-hmm. Um, We're going to be guilty of doing something. Yeah, I'm not going to sit idle. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to sit idle. I'm going to do everything I can to reach is I want to see my generation and the next come Amen. back. You got you think about the Israelites in Exodus. The whole reason that they God had to wait for an entire generation to die off mm-hmm. because they were the ones that were the problem. Mm-hmm. And, but you one thing that I always that stands out to me reading the scripture is that you have like with the book of judges you have the judge you know everything they go so far into rebellion and then the judge gets raised up and brings them back together and then as soon as the judge dies they go right back into rebellion and they forget god and it just seems like that that's the problem if you have a generation that's not going to raise your kids mm-hmm. with biblical values and you're not going to tell your kids about jesus and and not that it's you know like shoving it down their throat or right. anything because there's some people that won't say anything because they want their children to make their own choice. Right. I get that, but that's how they got into the mess they were in right. because you had the people who would enjoy God and know Him and then not tell their children about it, so their children don't know anything about it. So they start straying a little bit, and then their children definitely know anything anything about it. Mm-hmm. So they're just completely off the wall, and it just gets progressively yeah, worse. One generation away. And that's the thing. I don't understand. And it's like, what are, what are you doing if you're not trying to reach people? What are you doing? Reaching people. Kathy and I have this discussion a lot. Reaching people is the goal. That's what we're all about. And we were talking about this the other day, and I said something that, you know, it was a conversation between a husband and a wife. 
you all are here in the family room, so you must be family. <laughs> so I said this. I said, you know, when it comes to reaching people, whatever it is that you do, you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. So I'm going to be damned for doing. I'm going to let the critics criticize and let the cowards talk. We're going to say what needs to be said and do what needs to be done. I don't care how people feel about that. What's most important is to reach people. I want to be able to stand before God and say, we did everything we could. We spent every dime that we could. We spent every resource that we could to reach. We're just right now investing in new cameras so that we can make this better and make this reach more. Uh, so it's, it's important. My, my pastor used to say that if you had to spend a, a, a million dollars to reach one person, would it be worth it? Yeah. And everyone said yes. But in the church, we don't believe that. We, no, we, as soon as you, you start you bring it up, money, you go, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. You know, I don't know, I don't know. Well, do you believe it or not? And if you believe it, then go for it. And if You, so, you can't is it, take it with you. Is so. it worth it to get a negative comment, to get some criticism? Yes, because it gets the message out I don't there. care. Like I said, the thing about Jesus cares less about his reputation than he does about yes. your redemption. I don't care about my reputation. I'm not out here to soil it, but I don't really care if you like me or you don't. I, I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on defending my God and doing my God justice and doing what he has called me to do. Mm -hmm. And I would not be here unless I truly believed and felt that I was called by God. And man can't curse what God has blessed. You can't cancel what God has called. called. And God does not make mistakes. That's what I, I don't understand when people are like, oh, they're unqualified. Mm -hmm. Are they called by God? Then who are you to He'll make do the, the judgment qualifying. of you if they're qualified or not? That's why, and I sent it to Kelsey the other day. The whole thing with Peter, they were surprised when they saw the courage of Peter. Was that Acts they four? Were ignorant and unlearned men. They were uneducated men, but they were surprised at the courage of him because when the Holy Spirit gets inside of you and grips you so innately and intimately that you can't do anything other than tell other people about it. Obey. And that's why, that's why, you know, oh, the, the, the disciples, you know, it was all a lie and Jesus wasn't there and, you know, it was all fake and the Bible's fake and blah, 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 blah. Do you think these people would have gone to the lengths that they went to mm -hmm. to defend something, to defend a lie? Because mm -hmm. right. if I lie to you and you come over and you're like, hey, I'm going to dip you in boiling, what was it, boiling oil? Boiling for, oil. Oh, I was just kidding. Or saw you in half. Or I'd crucify you, you I'm be like, uh, actually, I was kind of stretching the truth a little bit there. What really happened was this. No, I, no, exactly. But if you truly believe it and you know it's true, Amen. there's nothing. There's no man that can come against you. There's nothing that the enemy could throw at you, and he's never going to stop throwing anything at you. You too, He's comment. always going to keep coming. Which one? From your mother. Yeah, can you imagine if John the Baptist were alive today? Can I insert something? I think I told your wife today, um, Kathy made that comment, can you imagine if John Baptist were alive today? I truly think that in some way you are. Whoa, whoa. Uh, here's how we get viral. Uh, I'm going to be on viral. Relevant Church Magazine. Go viral. Uh, <laughs> the spirit, we don't, well, the spirit of Elijah is still alive. I, I think that the people talk about that in terms of all that. I really feel that about you. I feel like the spirit of John the Baptist is kind of, what you have, you have this uh, internal uh, boldness. You have this moral compass that keeps you, you know, in this direction. But you have a, you know, son, it's, you're my, and yes, I'm proud of my son. You have an <laughs> a boldness about you that I truly believe. I told Kelsey, did I tell, did I say it? Yeah. I said it today. I said, I think that boy is going to be like John Baptist, uh, the, the, out in the wilderness. You don't give, you don't care. You're just going to say it. And be blunt, and if they can't handle that, then they can't handle that. I, I, I don't care. The people that do handle it are the ones that need to handle it, and, and the they're going to need to hear it. And, and the ones grow. that aren't, I'm not here to reach you. Anybody I, who's watching, am I right? Am, am I off base there? Tell me if I'm right. I think y'all are going to say amen. I think I'm right. Uh, I, I, I know that, you know, there's been chit chat lately about things. Yeah, I like this other Facebook one. Imagine getting in a fight with him. He's annoying because he's actually right most of the time. Well, that is that's the first I've ever heard of this. Somebody take a screenshot of that. So you can put that, <laughs> put that in a frame, but it's true. Uh, what were you about to say? I don't recall now, uh, but it's important. 
<laughs> uh, it must have been important. <laughs> no, I, I just that's the thing. You can't you can't care. Mm-hmm. You can't care. We th- what do you care? That's what I don't understand. What are we afraid of? What are we? And, think well, the, and, and I'm basic, preaching to myself because I hold human that human level. A lot. We want to be accepted. We exactly. want to be liked. We want people to accept us and like us. And then what it is is our insecurities just screaming out loud. I want you to like me. I want you to accept me. But if you care more about that than being accepted by God for speaking the truth, then you are already in trouble. You're already in trouble. Yeah. We're working for a and well done, not from man. People will take you from hero to zero that fast. Oh, that's Sunday. what I was saying with the thing of the prodigal son. As long as you are providing them with a mm-hmm. free handout, they will sing your praises. Palm and the Sunday. minute you pull it from them, exactly. Hosanna, Hosanna. Three days later, crucify him. Did you say that during this? I don't remember no, you bringing that up because so I was don't surprised. Live for the praise of men. But that was it. The same people that were crying out Hosanna were the same people yep. crying out crucify him in less than a week. Hashtag Kelsey on the couch. We're going to get there. We're coming. Um, but yeah, and, that, and that's the thing too. People need to understand, and I'm harping on it a little bit Sunday. We, as a child of God, we don't need to focus on acceptance of man. And, you know, we are... Like you said, we're all there's something within us that wants to be accepted, at least to yep. some degree, and mm-hmm. be liked. You don't want to walk around with it's everybody true. hating you. But as a child of God, you already operate from acceptance. God already accepts you. He accepted think about it with Jesus. Before he did anything in his ministry, my beloved he sent down the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove mm-hmm. and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Already. God was already pleased mm-hmm. with him and accepted him before he did a single thing, right a on. single miracle, before he preached a single sermon, anything. The minute you get Jesus in your life, you are operating from a mm-hmm. position of acceptance. Yes, sir. And we need to get that boldness back. We need because the world has no problem shoving its beliefs down your throats. Woo. You can't turn anything on. No, nope. nowadays you can't even turn on the fire stick and just have the little ads and whatever on the. You don't even have to watch anything. It's just the ads that pop up, and it's just and they're not even hiding everything in your anything. face, and they're not hiding anything anymore, and they're shoving it down everyone's throats. But the minute we like, hey, Jesus loves you. Oh, my God. Oh, don't do shove that. your religion down You're my throat. You're judging me. Okay. okay. You got it. What I said about the the the, uh, the magician Penn the other day about him, he's, a, he's an atheist, and it's a famous video on YouTube. He's an atheist, but he said uh, he admires Christian people because of their beliefs. He said, if I believed that there was a literal hell that people were in danger of, uh, and and you believe that, and you tell no one, I have no respect for you," he said. "But I do respect them because they they do that. So we have a message to 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 give and and to not be ashamed and not be afraid of it. Uh, and that's and and people they think like if you're calling out their sin and you're saying something like that, you hate them. You're right. judging them. You're hating them. And understandable because there are there are those hyper religious people that will walk in the middle of somewhere and be like, oh, y'all are going to hell. Right. That's not your place to say that. That ain't your place to judge that. That's not love. Jesus preached love uh, and acceptance, not tolerance. You don't, you don't tolerate the sin. You accept the person. Don't accept the sin. You, you're not going to hate somebody to the cross. You're only going to... Love is what drove him to the cross. How is love going to be anything but the only factor that gets people to look at the cross and to come to the cross and realize that we are all sinners and need a Savior who is Jesus. And by keeping your mouth shut, that is not love. If you know someone is in the wrong because of the way that they're living, it's not love for you to keep your mouth shut. That's why you see these street preachers uh, I think Nicholas Bowling is the one that I watch sometimes that goes to, I've said it on here before, that goes to the pride parades. And mm-hmm. he says it all the time. He's like, if I, because he wasn't living right. And he was like this college kid that was doing all the parties and, you know, all the girls and all that and all the drugs and this. And then he, he found Jesus. And he says it all the time, all the time in his videos. He's like, you know, if, if I know that I have the truth and it has changed me and I know that, you know, this is something real. Mm-hmm. 
if I don't, if I just keep it in the walls of the church Ezekiel and don't three. say it to anybody. Ezekiel 33, the blood's on your hands. Exactly. Yeah. And JD preached a sermon on that. Yes, sir. You and are, that's just the thing. Like, you're in danger of you, judgment. You are not loving people by staying silent. Amen. And that's what's important. That's what I loved. Well, I, I love it. But, and it sounds kind of harsh, but the whole thing of, one day, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Correct. And there's the two lines that do that, <laughs> unfortunately and fortunately. There's the line of sheep, the sheep, the ones who knew that we needed Jesus, that accepted Jesus as our Savior, and you're going to bow out of your love and adoration for him. And then there's the other side that rejected him, and you're going to be bowing out of fear as over his judge. power. And he's your judge. And that is the just the truth of it is it is entirely your choice on where you will spend eternity. And there's a lot of people that say, you know, um, they're like, oh, well, why would a loving God send people to hell? And I'm sure it's, I'm pretty sure I have it in my notes and I'll say it again Sunday. And for some people, it's probably going to sound completely (laughs) heretical or theologically incorrect. I, I, I would wager God is not sending people to hell. Mm-hmm. People are sending themselves to hell. You are choosing God. You are choosing to walk with God. You are choosing to acknowledge God and believe in Him and accept Him into your life, and not, or you are choosing to reject, reject him. him. And what hell is, is eternal separation from God. So you are either going to choose to spend your life and your eternity with God, or you are going to choose to not spend your life and not spend your eternity with God. Mm -hmm. So when I say that God's not sending people to hell, the choice is entirely ours. Amen. Solid. Somebody's going to get mad at that statement, I'm sure, but you need to understand the heart behind it. It's just, it, it is your choice. At any point in time, you can accept God or you can reject Him, and depending on those choices is depending on where you end up, mm-hmm. and it is entirely... He already paved the way. He already did the work. There's nothing you can do that will... There's nothing you can do that could save yourself. Jesus already saved you. You just have to accept Him into your life, but by not accepting Him, you are choosing to reject Him. Just like if you go out into the world and you re- you choose to reject the law and disobey the law, you're going to face the consequences. You're going to go to jail. And if you choose to reject the true law and the one true God, you're going to be choosing the consequences that come with that. Mm. And that is, that is terrifying yeah. to be living in complete separation from God. Nobody. For eternity. D.L. Moody said, if I can get a man to think about his soul for five minutes, he is sure to be converted. If you think about it like that, you absolutely are. I'm about done for tonight. Uh, I did have one caveat. This is a very rare thing for the family room, but I'm trying to be better. So (laughs) for the family room, um, we we try to take the sermon and break it down and give you the little behind-the-scenes stuff that we... From time to time, we talk about our mentality and our things that we go through preparing and then follow up when we finish... um, how we feel about it, what we, what we felt like we did well or what we could have done better. I had one regret from Sunday, and this is honest. This is just honest, and you can all about it if you want to. Um, but oh. near the altar call, I said, Jesus didn't do what he did so you could have a man bun. <laughs> At the moment, <laughs> I thought it was a funny, cute little thing. Oh, gosh. But afterwards, I walked around and I thought, why did you say that? I, because, apparently because somebody needed to hear it. Well, for some I don't reason. know. Or maybe I was just being a smart Alan. <laughs> but, you know, I'm trying to think. I don't want to say anything that pushes somebody away. That might have been, you know, I'm, does that make sense? Yeah. I, I, I'm just, just, I just, salty just so you all know my heart, man, it, it kind of bugged me a little bit. So I just wanted to say I'm not going to talk about stuff like that anymore because it's, it's extraneous, and I don't think it's necessary. I'll just work it out. That's just me. That's just me. That might hey, not be. You made a, a, a lot of comments. Maybe I'm just a hair guy, and I'm Turn mad around about and somebody attack me for not hair. hitting the symbols on that one part. And I was like, whoa. Hey, I said something about music. And you're like, ah. Well, I'm I was listening, playing. and I was like <laughs> processing everything you were saying. <laughs> oh, like, y'all ain't genu- saying nothing now. Genuinely paying attention, and then you're like, ah. <laughs> like, whoa. I like that. I like that is. Uh, All right. So, Sunday. Sunday. Coming up. You Sunday. ready? Sunday.
No, I'm terrified. No, I've got. Uh, I am ready. Two I'm services, ready. nine I've, and eleven. Every time I've been writing in my notes uh, and getting more and more prepared. I have gotten fired up at some point that I've mm-hmm. written down. Like I've watched, <laughs> I'll be writing down, and the text just gets really big <laughs> while I'm writing. Uh, hopefully, I can convey that when I get onto the stage instead of being a big scaredy cat. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I, I'm excited. Obviously, it's an honor because that is like mm-hmm. the biggest day ever for churches. Um, but I, I'm excited. Um, it's gonna be good. It's gonna it's gonna be good. I've invited some people. Oh, oh that was something else when we were on the call. Today, figuring out the check-in system. Uh, statistically, and this isn't one of those fake ones, 35% of people will come to church, uh, especially on Easter and Christmas. But statistically, only 3% of Christians invite people to church. Come on. Which is a massive shame. So what can we do? Shame. Send out some text messages. Yes. Uh, we sent out, Kelsey sent out the push notification on our app. Um you can share that. There's a anything. Share our YouTube. Share the Facebook. Just share something from this church and something. tell people on your social media, in your office, at your job, in your high school cafeteria, wherever. Just tell them about church and invite them. There's a lot of people that will show up. They're just waiting for it's you. Every, the world is hungry. The world, All creation is groaning. The world is hungry. Yeah. We are hungry for Jesus. We know we need Jesus down deep. And we just need people to start so talking about it. So send an invitation. So send Invite an inver- in- invitation. Two services. An invitation. Nine and 11. Come and be a part of that. Nine and uh, 11. And I'll we have child care on lot. both. Huh? We have child care now at both at the both. nine and the 11. I'm going to meet you in the parking lot when you drive in the driveway. My, me and a crew of people are going to be out there waving at you to welcome you. It's going to be a great day. First time in 42 years that I haven't preached on an Easter Sunday. So it's going to be an awesome thing to enjoy. So don't miss it. Be a or part of it. Be a part of history. Failure. And we've got a couple of other things to tell you about on Sunday that are coming up, but it's going to be good. I'm, I'm excited ready. For you. I'm I'm excited. This is going to be good. It's going to be a good a good day, all especially right. with all the stuff <laughs> that's going on behind the scenes and all the other Yeehaw. the the whatever's going on. All right, Sunday's Reggie. bound to be good night, great. Reggie. He's got to go get something. We to eat. are done. We're signing off. We will see you Sunday at nine or eleven or both because you can double dip. You can't ever get enough of God. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's message. If you did, make sure that you share and subscribe so that we can get you these sermons as soon as they are available. I'd like to take a moment and thank everyone that's a part of the family. Whether you serve with us or give financially, it's because of you that we are able to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus. If you have any questions or would like to get more involved, click the link in the description. Thank you. Have a blessed week.